1 Corinthians chapter 14 is, is where I want to go. If you've been with us uh, any length of time here, you know we've been talking a lot about Holy Spirit. Somebody say Holy Spirit. I hope you're getting acquainted with Him and stirring up that gift of Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Uh, we've talked about some controversial stuff in the body of Christ like tongues and the interpretations of tongues and praying in tongues and all those kind of things. Uh, last week, we began to talk about uh, a little bit about how the Holy Spirit gives us gifts. Somebody shout gifts. Uh, he gives us gifts, and I believe that, uh, you know, in our, in our day and time, not only in our day and time, but ever since Jesus died, rose again, uh, appeared to his disciples, and gave them uh, instructions to go and tarry in the city of Jerusalem until they're endued with power, somebody shout power, from on high, he said, you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And a lot of people think that, you know, the, the gifts of the Spirit and the Holy Spirit and uh, these things have passed away, but we need the gifts of God in the earth today. Jesus, when he, uh, established, uh, it, when he established his ministry here in the earth, uh, he was an example of who we are to be, and that is the son of a living, the living God. We are to be sons and daughters of God, and Jesus said that the Holy Spirit's going to come, and he's going he's to be released in the earth, and he will help you, he will guide you, and he will lead you into all truth. If we ever need the Holy Ghost, we need him now. The Father is in heaven. Jesus is seated, 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 sitting at the right hand, but the Holy Ghost is in the earth today. He is looking for a place to dwell, and He dwells in us. We are the temple now. The Bible says our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And a lot of times we can go to church, uh, to church. We, we're supposed to be the church. We're not just to go to church. You should go to church you should go to the house of the Lord and gather with the church. But what I'm saying is that a lot of times the church has been weak and uh, kind of just go through the same motions over and over and over again, and people kind of try out church, and sometimes people go to church for years and just hope that God will do something. But the God, uh, the, the God of the, the Holy Ghost, the part of the Trinity, the third part of the Trinity lives on the inside of us, and what we need to do is become more acquainted with Him more sensitive to Him, yield to Him, grow in our relationship with Him. And I'm here to tell you, He is the, the supernatural power of God in our life. He helps us to walk in freedom. He helps us to walk in victory. He helps us to walk in everything that God has for us. And so in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, uh, Paul is writing to the church at Corinth, and he is talking about the gifts of God, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 14, chapter, chapter 14, verse number 1, he says this, to pursue love. We're to pursue love, but we are to desire spiritual gifts. That it, There's nothing wrong with desiring spiritual gifts. If you don't have a desire for the Holy Ghost, something is wrong. If you don't have a desire for more of the Spirit of God in your life, in your marriage, if you're not hungry for that, uh, something is wrong in our life, and it could be that we are under spiritual attack. It could be that we haven't been taught, or we've been taught the wrong thing, or we've been misinformed uh, about the ways of the kingdom and the ways of God, but we are to pursue love. So our number one thing should be pursuing God. Why? Because God is love. When he says we are to pursue love, we are to pursue God, to walk in the love of God, to be changed, to be healed. Everything stems from love because God is love. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Love is so important, and we live in a society today that don't really understand love. Because if you stand up for truth, they say you hate all right, I won't, get, I won't go into all that, but it's the truth. If you stand up for the truth of the Word of God, they say you hate, but sometimes love is tough. Love is not rude. Not, lo, love is not proud. It is not boastful, 1 Corinthians 13. You can find out the description of love, but love does not back down because love can be tough on the flesh. And the Bible says that we're to pursue love because God is love, but we are to desire spiritual gifts. It should be a desire in us for God to be working through the Holy Spirit in our life, in our families, in our homes, in our gatherings, wherever we go, the, the, the spiritual gifts. But he says this, but especially that you may prophesy. Somebody shout prophesy. Especially that you may prophesy. 
I really felt as I was praying that we were going to talk about prophecy today, but I, I sensed the Lord kind of shifted where we're going to go. But he says, prophecy is so important, especially desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. He says, for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks edification, edification, and exhortation, and comfort to men. That's why he was saying it is important that you prophesy because we all need some edification. Edification means built up. Not built up in our flesh, not built up in our pride, not built up in a, in a big head. We need built up in the spirit. We need built up in our inner man. We need built up in the things of God. We need built up in the power of God and the presence of God. We need built up in courage. We need built up in strength. We need built up in those areas. And he said prophecy will do that. It's for the edification. It is for the building up of the saints. It's to build us up. And he says, for the exhortation and for the comfort to men, he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. We talked a lot about that a few weeks ago, but he who prophesies edifies the church. I wish that you all spoke in tongues, but even more that you prophesied. For he who prophesies, prophesies is greater than he who speaks in tongues, unless indeed he interprets and the church may receive edification. So in this passage here, uh, we're not going to really talk about prophecy today, but he's talking about these spiritual gifts, and we're to desire these spiritual gifts because these spiritual gifts are empowerments from the Holy Ghost in our life. And if we don't believe in the Holy Ghost, if we believe the gifts are passed away, we are void of the power of God in our life. We have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. And I can tell you this, it's the traditions of men, Jesus said, that have made the word of God of no effect. And when we build our life upon the traditions of men instead of the truth of the word of God, we walk around with that form of godliness but no power. But I declare today, God is wanting to raise up a people full of power. I'm talking about a people that are full of power to overcome the enemy, to, to see the works of darkness cast out of their homes and their cities. I believe that God is wanting to raise up a people that are stirred up in the Holy Ghost, that everywhere we go, we are walking in the power of God, not to bring, not to bring attention to ourselves, but to God. Because gifts were not intended to puff us up and bring attention to ourselves. Gifts were inten intended to bring people closer to God. To bring people closer to God. And we need to learn, we need to learn and grow in our partnership with the Holy Spirit. We need to learn and grow in our walk with the Holy Spirit. We need to yield to the Holy Spirit in our life because it is important for us to understand this. You can hear from God just as much as I can hear from God. You can hear from God for your life and your family just as much as the apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, and teacher can hear from God. If you are impressed with somebody that can hear from God, God doesn't allow us to hear from him just so that you can be impressed by somebody that hears from God. And a lot of people will try to impress people with, them, with their gifts to draw attention to themselves. And our gifts were never intended to impress people. Our gifts were intended to draw people people closer to the heart of the Father. And gifts have been misused, and people that have been gifted have, have, have used gifts to build their own life and build their own kingdom and build their own thing and to gain money and to gain influence and to gain uh, uh, popularity and to gain all these things. But at the end of the day, he said we are to desire these spiritual gifts. Why? Because God wants to draw everybody unto himself. It is so important that you realize that my ability to hear from God is not to impress you and your ability to hear from God is not to impress other people. It is to draw people closer to the Lord. And all the gifts are intended to draw people, to edify, to exhort, to comfort the church and draw people closer to the place of intimacy. Because the things of God and the desiring the spiritual gifts are not a substitute for intimacy. The only way the gifts of God and the Holy Ghost can work in a pure form in our life is when our heart motive is to pursue God with everything we have. To press in and lean into Him. To, to go after Him with everything that we have. And our life and family get into the shape that we are in for a number of reasons, but I want to say this. Sometimes we are in the predicament or the shape that we're in because we don't hear from God. We don't stop and hear from God. 
I know some people think it's crazy, but if, I, if, I'm, if I'm purchasing something big like a car or something else, I want to hear from God. I don't want to just get this to get this or, oh, this is my favorite or this and that. God gives us the desires of our heart. Don't hear me wrong, but everything that we do, we should hear from God. When our children go to school, we should hear from God. When our families, in our marriages, in our homes, when we make decisions, we should hear from God and not depend upon just our own way of doing things, how the society said to do things, how the news media is saying to do things. Oh, you better do this, or you better do this, or you're going to get this, or you're going to get that. No, you need to hear from God for your life. That's why there was a constitution that was founded upon biblical principles so that you could make a decision to hear from God for your own life and have the freedom to hear from God and to follow God. There are people, I was in our healing, uh, in our healing class Wednesday night, I was talking about this minister named David Hogan, and David Hogan is a missionary to Mexico, and he is uh, extreme for Jesus, and uh, when I was in ministry training school, he had visited the Atlanta area, and we went to see David Hogan, we went to be in a meeting that he was in, and uh, I've listened to some of his messages over the years, and just seen the fruit of his life, and the, the places that he has went in, in Mexico, some of the crazy, uh, crazy demonic places and just seeing God deliver and heal people and miracles and people have been raised from the dead. It's documented through his ministry and, 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 and all these things. And I remember David uh, telling a story about his wife being deathly sick, like she was so sick and God spoke to him and said, you need to go to this village over here. You need to go and you need to get up in the morning and you need to go preach the gospel. And he had heard from God and his wife, they had been praying for her and she was sick and she was sick to the point of almost death. There was nothing they could do and they had been praying and fasting and believing God and nothing had changed and he had a word from God. You better make sure you have a word from God. But he had a word from God that he needed to go. And his wife was saying, David, why are you leaving me right now? And he said, I have a word from God. I have to go. I, when you come back, I may not be here. I could be gone, and you're going to leave me in my, in my last hours, in my last moments. You're going to leave me. And he heard from God, and he went to the village, and he preached, and God moved in the village. When he came back to his house, his wife was completely healed. Completely healed. Why? Because he heard from God. That is foreign to the church today. We listen to the news and do what the news says. We listen to the government and do what the government says. Listen, the Bible says to honor those that are in authority and that we are subject to the governors in the earth. I understand that. I'm not talking about being rebellious in all these areas and all these places for the sake of being rebellious, but I'm saying God has given us free will to hear from Him and to follow Him and to obey Him. And it's important that we begin to hear from God. And the way we hear from God is reading our Bible. But when we read our Bible, we need the Holy Ghost active in our life. We need to be yielded. I, I'm, I'm teaching my daughter right now. I said, Michaela, every time you read the Bible, the first thing you need to do when you open it up is invite the Holy Spirit because he inspired this word, Michaela, and he will reveal to you, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you things that you just read in your natural that may not mean anything to you, but the Spirit of God will quicken things to you, open your eyes to things. So when you open your Bible, if you are just reading one chapter, say this, Michaela, say, Father, thank you for the gift of Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, as I read the words that you inspired and breathed, I ask that you would open my eyes to them. You are the one that leads me into truth and shows me all things. And so I thank you for that. And then you begin to read your Bible. Why? Because you can read the Bible all that you want to read it until the breath of God breathes, and it has been breathed by God, but until you not just have the logos, but until you have the rhema, that it comes alive to you. It is the rhema word of of God, and that is so far and many times to the church today because we want the pastor to give us a word, and the pastor should bring the word of the living God, but you can get a word on Monday. Woo! You can get a word on Tuesday. You can get a word in the middle of the night when you don't know how you're going to get by, what's just going to happen. You've got to get acquainted with the Holy Ghost to get the word of God. Why? Because he sent his word and healed them of all their diseases. 
His word will deliver you. It will set you free. It will cause you to walk in new places and new heights. It will bless your family. It will bless your home. The word of the Lord will bless you in every area of your life. You can hear from God. God's speaking more than you even realize. He is speaking more than you even realize. And we've become dull dull of hearing. The church has become dull of hearing. Lord, I don't want to be dull of hearing. So we get our families, our children. Help me, Jesus. Our children get in the situations many times they're in because I didn't hear from God. Or number two, I didn't obey God. Oh, that's going to upset my child if I take that game away from them. And I know that's foreign even to the church people. Like, why are you being so religious about this? Well, if we really understood spiritual warfare and how, you know what, it's not that we don't trust our children, it's that we don't trust the devil that works through this stuff. And I'm here to tell you that, uh, that, that about a year and a half ago, I had to set my daughter down, and she had been playing this game, and I looked into this game, I just found out about it, and I had to sit her down and tell her why we can't play that game, but everybody else can. And I had to explain to her why this is the case and why we do this. That was my conviction. That was the Spirit of the Lord speaking to me. And I am thankful that I obeyed that. I am thankful that I obeyed that. I am grateful that I obeyed that. And sometimes we're in the prediction that we're in and, and the predicament or whatever that we're in because, number one, we're not hearing from God. Or, number two, we hear from God, but we disobey it and we, 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 we just cast it to the side. Why? Because everything, listen, Everything in society and in this world, there is a spirit of antichrist. I know a lot of times, hey, it's a, it's a man going to be, I, I understand biblical prophecy and all that, not to the fullest that I need to, but I understand. But there is a spirit in the world called an antichrist spirit, and it's actually an anti-anointing spirit that doesn't care if you have a form of godliness but deny the power of. It doesn't care, and what it wants to do is rob you and make you and me dull to the Word of God, dull to to hearing the Word of God and saying, you know what, we just get to pick and choose what we want. But here, let me tell you this. God is looking for a bride that will embrace the fullness of His Word. God is looking for a people that will yield to the Holy Spirit and say, you know what, I want to hear from God if it's not popular with society, if it don't look right, if it don't sound right, if it lines up with the written Word of God, I'm going to hold on to it. Why? Because this Word is final authority. Everything else will bow to this word. Heaven and earth will pass away, but this word by no means shall pass away. You need a word. I need a word. We need to get in the presence and get the word of God and walk it out in our life. It's so important. He said desires these spiritual gifts, that we can walk in these gifts and that we can hear from God. And let me say this. Fruit... Fruit, fruit, the fruit of the Spirit. Let's just go there, Galatians chapter 5, because we've been talking about, the, we've been talking about uh, gifts and fruit. We talked about that last, night, uh, last week, the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, both are very important. Some people say we need to talk more about the gifts. Some people say we need to talk more about the fruit, but they go, they go together. It's the same Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And fruit is what proves, listen to this, fruit is what proves the maturity of a person, not gifts. I want to say this again because a lot of people will run and chase gifts. A lot of people will run and chase gifts, and people can operate in the gifts of God but have no fruit of the Spirit in their life, and it ends up being a train wreck, and everybody exalts men instead of exalting God. And gifts do not determine the maturity of a believer. Fruit determines the maturity of a believer because we even said it last week that a lot of people take their gift will take them, their character can't keep them, and therefore it hurts the body of Christ. And fruit is what determines the maturity. What did Jesus say? You will know them by their 
fruits. He didn't say you'll know them by their gifts. He didn't say you'll know them by their ability to preach and prophesy and get on TV or get on the internet or do this or draw a crowd or anything else. He said, no, you will know them by their fruits. You will know them by their fruit. Matthew 7 In 16, Jesus said that in Matthew 7, 22 to 23, he says this, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Oh, here's the gifted ones. Have we not prophesied in your name, Lord? Have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me who you practice lawlessness. Gifts are to be desired and gifts are are so important, and my heart is stirred for the gifts to be stirred in each and every person's life, for your family, for your home, not to draw attention to ourselves, not to say, ooh, look at that pe- those people over there. No, to draw people to the heart of the Father. And gifts have been perverted, and people have been immature, but they have gifts in their life. The Bible says that the gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. God gifts people to do certain things, but fruit will only keep you. In Galatians chapter number 5, Galatians chapter number 5, verse 22. Where's Galatians? Galatians. Timothy, where? Am I back? Pastor's supposed to know the Bible. Galatians is before Ephesians. What's wrong with me? Y'all there? (laughs) Took y'all long enough. (laughs) Don't y'all know where Galatians is? (laughs) But the fruit, somebody shout fruit, of the Spirit is this. It is love. Man, God was moving on my heart so much about love. I hope you received that. That was a word from God. That's not to puff me up or deprive me or anything else. That was a word from God, but if you didn't respond to it, it didn't do much for you. The fruit is love. It it is love. It's joy. It's peace. No, notice, notice, I, and I don't know, you know, just how, how it's written and the, and the way the writer did it, and it's inspired by the Holy Ghost, but, you know, notice, notice, first it says love. Is that a coincidence? I mean, I'm not a Bible scholar or anything else, but it's amazing to me that it's love, joy, and peace. That if your life is absent of love, joy, and peace, everything else after love, joy, and peace seems to not really manifest in your life. And this thing begins, even if you go back to 1 Corinthians 14, that we are to pursue love. And then we are to desire spiritual gifts. And, 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 and this fruit that, that God wants to give us is through the Spirit of God. And it's love, it's joy, it is peace. Notice, notice what he says here. He says, it is love, it is joy, it is peace. And then maybe... If you got some love, joy, and peace, then you can have a little bit of long suffering. I, I I don't know. You need love. You need. I, I know you need love, and long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such there is no law. He says, love. You got to receive the love of God. This is the fruit of the spirit. This is the Spirit's activity in our life. People say, man, don't pray for patience. And you better not pray for patience. But it's a fruit. It's the Spirit. The Spirit fruit. It's in there. Because He's in there. But maybe there's some flesh that needs some sandpaper on it. You know what I mean? Because we're more in tune with the flesh than the spirit. That's why it's important that we pursue God. Because in his presence is the fullness of joy. And I feel 
in my spirit today that God wants to strengthen every heart in every home today. And I believe by the stirring of the Spirit, even in my, my life this morning, that God wants to strengthen us. And how many know this, that joy, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And in this day, in this time, in this chaos, in all the stuff that's been going on in the earth, sometimes it's hard for people to have joy. That is a plan and a plot of the enemy because the fruit of the Spirit is joy in your life. And we need joy in, on the inside. We need joy stirred up. We need to hear from God. We need the Spirit's working in our life and in our families and in our homes. And we need to be strengthened in our inner man by the Holy Ghost to fulfill what God has called us to fulfill because wickedness keeps trying to overtake the plan and the purpose of God and lull, lull Christians to sleep in our stupor, in our, in our slumber. And God wants to awaken us to the Holy Ghost and fire that he wants to breathe and baptize us in so that we can walk in the spirit, which is love, joy, peace, love, joy, peace. So many Christians, including myself sometimes, are heavy, depressed, and worried, heavy, depressed, and worried, filled with uncertainty, filled with anxiety. There is a lot of uncertainty in this world, but there is one certainty that the Holy Ghost never sleeps or slumber. He he is always there and he will empower you and he will strengthen you but the only way to be strengthened is you got to drink from the cup that never runs dry the only way to be strengthened is you've got to eat the bread of life the only way to be strengthened is to draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto you so many times people are saying, I'm just going to church and I hope something good happens and maybe if I do this, God will grace me and God will do this. No, if you will draw near to God, then God will draw near to you. And when you draw near to Him and He draw near to you, He will fill you with the Holy Ghost. And when you begin to walk in the Spirit of God and put your flesh under, including myself, we will begin to walk in a greater dimension that God has called us to walk in. And that dimension is freedom and life. But a lot of us get weak and weary. And the Spirit of God wants to strengthen us today. They don't have any of these scriptures. I, I, I want to go to Joshua chapter 1. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 1, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, this was Joshua. He was the assistant to Moses, and Moses was a pretty big deal. Moses encountered the Lord in a burning bush that was not consumed. Moses was leading the people of Israel. He wasn't a perfect man, but the Bible says that he would ascend the mountain of God and everybody else would stay at the bottom. He was seeking the face of the Lord, but he had an assistant. His name was Joshua, and when I was a very young Christian, I'm still young, but when I was a very young Christian, I studied Joshua a lot. I liked Joshua. I liked what I read about Joshua, and I studied Joshua a lot. And one of the greatest things that I took away from Joshua was that Joshua would linger in the presence of the Lord when everybody else left. It's amazing. People are so quick to get in and quick to get out. All right, I'm a pastor. I won't go there. I'll be real nice. People ain't got time for a prayer meeting. People ain't got time for this. And one thing I loved about Joshua, he, he, he would linger in the presence of the Lord. He, he, would, he would hold back. When everybody else left and got on with their life, he, he, would, he, would, he would hover in the presence of the Lord. And that is so important. That spoke to me volumes because I knew that if I wanted to be transformed and if I wanted to be a lover of God, I needed to be in His presence. I just want to know Him. I just want to know Him. I just want to know His heart. And I would linger in the presence of the Lord. Moses, my servant, is dead. He said, now therefore arise. He said, arise, go over this Jordan, arise. How many know it takes the power of God to rise? He is the resurrected king that resurrects us through the power of what? The Holy Ghost. 
If we're going to rise up, if we're going to rise up out of depression, we need the power of God. If we're going to rise up out of our addiction, we need the Spirit of God. If we're going to rise up to new levels and new places to conquer what God has called us to conquer, the only way to rise is through the partnership and the leadership of the Spirit of God in our life. Not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord. He says, I want you to arise and go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I'm giving to them, the children of Israel. He said, listen, I'm giving you something. I'm giving you something. When Jesus hung on the cross, he said it is finished. You know what he gave you? Joy. Peace. Come on now. You know what he gave you? Freedom and life. You know what he gave you? A covenant of healing. He fulfilled it. That you ain't gotta you ain't gotta pray to get healed. You gotta you gotta rise up in the strength of God and you gotta prophesy the word of the Lord over your life that by his stripes I was healed. Well, my toes still hurts. Well, keep speaking the word of the Lord, keep rising up in the strength of God, keep declaring the word of the Lord, because the enemy wants to try to talk you out. Because when you plant a seed, and the Bible says the word is the seed, when you plant a seed in your life or over your life, you better bet the enemy's gonna come and try to steal it. He's going to try to rob it. He's going to try to get you discouraged and make you think that that don't work. But you got to keep talking to the seed. You got to keep speaking the seed. You got to keep watering it. You got to keep declaring it. You got to keep walking in it, not by what you feel. You got to keep on keeping on. You need the strength of God to arise and go over and take what God has already given you. That's why the Bible says the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. You know what that means? That there are gates that try to keep you out of the provision that God has given you, but they shall not prevail. But you know what you got to do? You got to go up sometimes and you got to kick them with the truth. You got to rise up sometime with the strength of God and say, everybody else is going to hell, but I ain't going to hell. Everybody else don't want to worship, but I'm going to worship. Nobody else wants to pray, but I'm going to pray. Sometimes you got to rise up when the enemy says, you know what? This ain't going to happen. That's going to happen. You got to rise up and you got to kick those gates down and you got to go in and take what God has already given to you because the enemy will bring a forfeit, uh, a counterfeit to everything in your life to try to get you to follow a trail or follow a feeling, or follow this or that. But Joshua, the word of the Lord came to Joshua and said, you got to rise up and you got to go take what I'm giving you. Every place of the sole of your foot will tread upon, I will give you. As I said to Moses, for the wilderness and to the Lebanon and from the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as I was with Moses. I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. So here came a command to rise up. I'm saying today, rise up. Church, rise up. Church, get up. So Moses was chosen. How many know you are chosen by God? You're a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, God's holy people. You may not feel like it. You may not look like it. You may not even sound like it. But you are. I am. He is. We can. Will we? Here's what happened to Joshua. The the word came, arise and go over. I'm giving you something. He said, everywhere the sole of your feet treads, I am there. I will be with you. And right after he gave him that, right after he said, you know what? You got to rise up. So I'm saying, church, we got to rise up. We got to rise up in the power of God. We got to rise up in the love of God. We got to rise up in the gifts of God. We got to rise up in the fruit of God. We got to rise up. It is time for the church to rise up and shine the glory of the Lord in the earth. It seems like everything's getting darker and darker, but where sin abounds, grace abounds that much more. And God is looking for a people that will begin to rise up. So Moses was, uh, uh, Moses had died. Joshua was here. He had gotten the word of the Lord, his commission to Joshua. He's saying, listen, everywhere you go, I've given it to you. Everywhere, if you will just start, tr- if you will start walking. Somebody needs to take up their bed and walk today. You need to start walking instead of waiting. We're waiting, and God is saying, walk. We're waiting, and God is saying, get up and go. We're, 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 we're waiting, and God's waiting on us because he's already fulfilled his word. He sent his word, and he said, I will watch over my word to perform it. Jesus is the word made flesh. And, and, 
after he tells him all this, verse 6 is so important. He says, listen, this is key, Joshua. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. The church has been beat down. I mean, people have said, oh, the church is diminishing since COVID and everything else. And I refuse that. I refuse that because the kingdom church suffers violent, but the violent take it by force. And we're okay. Listen, we're okay with sitting in church and hearing a good little sermon. No, you need to go to war the, tonight. You need to go to war in the morning. You, you need to know that the Lord God will fight all your battles if you will pursue love, desire spiritual gifts. But you've got to stay strong in God. You've got to stay strong in the Spirit. You've got to stay strong in the Word of God. Listen to what he says. After he says, arise and go, he says, be strong and be of good courage. For this two people shall devour an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law. What is the law? It is what God's spoken. It is God's word. This goes back. I'm tying this together. It goes back in the beginning that you need to hear the word of God. You need to hear the word of God for yourself. You need to hear the word of God over your situation. Because you know what? If you leave it up to experts, thank God for experts. If you leave it up to professionals, thank God for professionals. But there is none higher than the word of the living God. And so so what happens is we've got to get with the Holy Ghost and we've got to walk Walk with the Holy Ghost and hear from the Holy Ghost. Why? Because we need strength. We need courage to keep going forward. He says, listen, only be strong and very very courageous that you observe to do according to all the law which Moses had gotten. He's saying, listen, you got to do the word I'm speaking to you. And you need strength and you need courage to do it. You need strength and you need courage to do it. He said, my, Mos- my, my servant commanded you, do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. If there ever was a, listen, I'm not, I, I, I'm not, there, 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 are, there are people way more gifted than me. There are people that can w- preach way better than me. But I feel this is a now word for us, that we cannot turn our eyes from the truth of the living God to the right or the left. We've got to keep our eyes focused on Jesus. And what we need is the fruit of of God's spirit, which is love, joy, and peace. And if we're going to be strengthened in God, we need the joy of God. And the Bible says this, that we are to put on a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So that tells me that the church needs to rise up and begin to praise God like we've never praised God before. Be strong and courageous. Verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that's written in it. For then you will make what? Your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Prosperity and success. Prosperity and success is what every American wants. It's what every person in the earth wants. Prosperity and success. Prosperity and success. But our means about getting it are really far from God. Because we put God in the background and we'll visit him every now and then. We'll come to his house when we feel like it and this and that. When he should be our number one priority. And Moses got this command and this commission to rise up and to go. It, today's the day for mothers to rise up, fathers to rise up, children to rise up. Everything that has breath to rise up and begin to praise the Lord. We ain't got no ants, but I'm commanding them to rise up and praise the Lord too. You know, the birds are praising the Lord and chirping this morning. I'll never forget sitting out on my porch one day many, many years ago after I got born again, and I heard the birds chirping. I'm like, man, that's beautiful. And the Lord said, you're going to let that bird out praise me, out praise you? You're going to let that bird, that bird is singing my praises right now. And I'm like, God, you are so worthy. Woo! Just let my neighbors know. God is alive. He is living in me. We too worried about what somebody's going to think about us. We too worried about this. We've been conditioned even in the church. You better sit down and be quiet. I'm not talking about disrupting a service and doing things out of order, but I'm talking about when we're in the midst of praise, we should be praising. But if we were doing it out there, we'd have no problem in here. It begins in it begins in your home. It begins in your home. 
I, I, I remember, I don't do it near as much as I need to do it. Sometimes I feel convicted about it and everything else, but I remember when Michaela was a little bitty thing, and she was, uh, she was in one of them walker things that run around. She would bang everything, man. She would hit everything, bang everything. I got a video. Thank God for videos. I got a video that's so funny of her. I won't play it because she ain't in here. She told me not to talk about her in the sermon. She's serving downstairs this morning, so I'm going to talk about her. She's in this little walker walking around, and I remember we were living in the apartments, and you couldn't put your music too loud, but we were living. She was like almost two maybe, and I'd put her in that little walker when her mom wasn't there and be in the bedroom, and I'd put on worship music, and I'd just start worshiping and praying in the Holy Ghost, and she'd just be running around, looking at me, screaming and everything else. And you know what? She didn't know what I was doing. But you got to be willing to not worry about feeling awkward around your family. You get, it's got to start in the home. Because the Lord is inhabiting the praises of his people. And where his presence is, there is joy, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. So we got to rise up in the power of the Holy Ghost. We need to be a supernatural witness in the earth. You know what God is looking for? The worshipers who will be a supernatural witness, who will embrace Holy Spirit, who will wake up with Holy Spirit on their mind. And guess what? You may not know how to grow in your relationship with the Holy Spirit, but if you ask Him, He is the helper that will teach you and lead you. Many of you have heard my story when I first got born again, and I went home after I got born again. I got born again in a Baptist church right here in Clarksville, and I went home, and that night I laid down in my bed, and I knew that I was supposed to pray. The deacons were praying. Everybody was praying. If you're saved, you're supposed to pray, right? I didn't know how to pray. And I remember laying down in my bed that night, and I said, God, I know you touched my heart today, but I don't even know how to pray. I said, will you teach me how to pray? And I fell asleep. Sometimes it's the most spiritual thing you can do. Just go take a nap. <laughs> Why? Because the Lord's still working while you're sleeping. Don't even go pray. Just go take a nap right now. Just go lay down. <laughs> you know, rest is important. And a lot of times in the church, we've got it backwards. We try to work people, work people, work people to death. You need a rest every now and then. Anyway, most pastors, most pastors wouldn't say that. You need to sign up and get busy. Some of y'all do need to get busy. <laughs> but if you need a rest, you're going to get a rest. Because the last thing we want to do is wear out the saints. Your family's important. Your marriage is important. It's more important than pastor's ministry. Come on. Because the ministry of pastor is to the Holy Ghost of God. It is to Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And ministry is to God and then the people. Anyway. Went dead. Forget it. I didn't have nothing on there I want to share anyway. It was in the Bible. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. This is the key to strength and rising up. I want to give you this, and we're going to close. This is the key to strength and rising up. He says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You know what that means? That you should be speaking it all the time. That your mouth is never void of the word and the promises of God. Decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you. I'm not talking about bling bling and things and stuff like that. I'm talking about the word of the living God. Because if you need a job, God will provide you a job. If you need a car, God will provide you a car. If you need a house, all the single ladies need a good man, God will provide you a good man. <laughs> but you know what the key is? You've got to run with God. Stop chasing them. Stop chasing them. They ain't worth chasing. God is the only one worthy of chasing. And when you're chasing him, somebody over here else will be chasing him, and then y'all going to collide. You don't want to be off at a little degree. We want to be on the path of God. You hear me, church? We want to be on the path of God. Because if you shoot a rocket, and it's just off a couple of degrees... The further it goes, the further away it gets. But if you're running with God and they're running with God, eventually, 
He says, listen, you've got to be strong and courageous. If there ever was a time for the church to be strong and courageous, it is right now. It is today. Because God wants your family whole. He wants your heart whole. He wants your marriage whole. He wants you whole. He don't want to just heal you. He came to make us whole. And he was telling Joshua, you got to be strong and courageous. He says, here's the key. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. It means that you've got to get in this word. And he says this. Let me just read it. He says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. Not just on Sunday, not just on Wednesday, day and night. You got to get this word in you. You can't just get in the word. You got to get the word in you. That's why some people say, man, look how many chapters I read. I said, it doesn't matter about how many chapters you read. God's not impressed with how many chapters you read. You can take two or three scriptures and get them in your heart and walk them out. And man, enemies are falling. Faith is rising. Things are happening and shifting. Why? Because he said, if you're going to be strong and courageous and arise and take the land, he said, you've got to not let let this word depart from your mouth. You got to meditate in it night and day, day and night, night and day. Meditate in it. We can't get tired of it. We can't get used to it. We've got to keep putting the word on the inside of us. And when we put it on the inside of us, we got to declare it out of our mouth. It's part of prophecy that we were going to talk about, but he says, that you may observe. Not only do you got to speak it, not only you got to put it in, meditate. People don't people don't memorize scripture much anymore. How many memorize the scripture in the last thirty days? Put you on the spot, putting us all on the spot. If I gave a test today, which I'm not, and told you to write every scripture that you know, you may not be able to have you may not be able to have chapter and verse. I get that. Sometimes I quote a lot of scriptures and I'm like, where's that chapter and where's that verse? But it's amazing. Sometimes under pressure you may not even feel them. You you may not even bring them to remembrance, but I can tell you this one of the greatest things that ever happened to me in ministry school is when they sat us down and told us we were gonna memorize scripture for nine months. And there will be things when I'm talking to people that will come up out of my spirit. Why? Because I've committed it to put on the inside of me. That is the Holy Ghost working on the inside of us. That is whenever you feel like that you are going to fail and you are overcome by your feelings and your emotions, that you sit down and you quiet yourself for a minute, minute and the Holy Ghost brings the Word of God up to you. And when He brings the Word of God up to you, what happens? Discouragement begins, begins to fall. Strength begins to come in. And you rise up and fulfill what God has already promised. It's so important. This is the key to walk in strength. It is His Word. It is us meditating on it, not only meditating on it, committing it to our life and memory. It is us speaking it, and not only speaking it, He goes on to say, you must observe to do according to all that is written in it. He says that we have to walk the Word out. We have to walk the Word out. Keep walking the Word out. Why? Because if you are a hearer and not a doer, you deceive your own self. Father, I want deception broken off my life. I want deception broken off your bride and the people of God. Why? Because there is land to take. There is territory. America will be saved in the name of Jesus. God wants to save the entire earth and all of creation. It's not his will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. But what are we doing? What are we speaking? What are we putting on the inside of us? You know why? Because we need strength in our inner man. I close with Ephesians chapter number 3. I'm going to go to Ephesians if I can find it. I'm going to go to Ephesians. Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. Chapter 3. Paul knew Scripture. He was a religious man. His name was Saul before it was Paul, but he had an encounter with God was filled with the Holy Spirit, wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, nearly two-thirds. Bible scholars will say different things, but a big majority of the letters to the church, he was an apostle. He lived a life that persecuted Christians, had an encounter with God because there was a gift that God had put on the inside of him. He just didn't know it yet. 
had this encounter with God, and he's writing to the church at Ephesus, and he pins these prayers, he writes these prayers, he declares these prayers, and he teaches the early church how to pray. And I want to encourage you in Ephesians chapter 1, there is a prayer starting in verse 15 where Paul prays for spiritual wisdom. These are prayers that you need to pray over your life on a continual, regular basis. There's nothing more powerful than praying the Word of God. Speaking and praying the Word of God. And in, in, in Ephesians chapter 3, he also uh, pins this other prayer. In verse 14, he says, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened. Somebody shout strengthened. To be strengthened with might through what? His Spirit. Strengthened with might through His Spirit in your inner man. Your innermost being. Your inner man. Your innermost being. Verse 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That you being rooted and grounded in what? Love. It all ties together. I mean, I feel like I'm doing a poor job of putting it all together, but it all ties together. It comes back to love and desiring the Spirit of God moving and working in our life and being strengthened with the fruit of the Spirit in our life with love, joy, and peace that it would go on and on. But many Christians today are so void of joy. And he says, I, I, I pray that, that, that God would grant you according to the riches of his glory that you be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, the depth, and the height to know the love of God which passes our own knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God. And then it goes on to say, we quote this all the time, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that works in us. It goes back to what we said a week or two weeks ago, the power of God has to be working in us. Well, I'm not worthy of that power. No, you're, you, you're not. You probably did some things you shouldn't do, like us all. But his love is unconditional. If we will yield and surrender as a son and a daughter of the living God. And I believe today that God wants to strengthen our hearts. He wants to strengthen us in our inner man to rise up, to not be full of discourage. We need courage. The Bible says you have need of endurance because after you have done the will of God, the will of God is the word of God. After you have done the will of God, then you can receive the promises of God. The promises are out there, but until we rise up, and we start stepping and we start walking in the Spirit instead of waiting on God to do something that He has already asked us to do. And many times we pray that God, we ask God to heal when God's already healed. And we wonder where the disconnect is sometimes. And the disconnect is that we need to be led by the Spirit of God. And we need the fruit and we need, we need the, the gifts of God operating and working in our life. Because he wants to strengthen us. And it takes us meditating on this word, speaking this word, and walking this word out.